Hi everybody, welcome back to the Cupcake Demo Channel with me, Sally. Now today I have got a cracker of a cupcake recipe for you guys. It is for Jaffa Cake Cupcakes. And this is just one of many, many cupcakes that we have come up with here in recent months. And most of those will be finding their way into the Crumbs and Doilies recipe book. The very first Crumbs and Doilies recipe book, which is probably the most exciting thing that's happened here in a very, very long time. Other stuff does happen, like this recipe is really exciting. Anyway, <laughs> the recipe book is available to pre-order right now. It's not going to be out until the 24th of November, but if you head to the description box below, there are links where you can pre-order it, and we would love it if you could, but maybe you need convincing. That's what I'm here to do today. I'm going to take you through this cupcake recipe, and I guarantee by the end of it, you are going to be begging for more, which means you're going to want to buy that recipe book. So. If you're not gonna do it now, do it at the end of this video. Anyway, let's get on with this. So this is for Jaffa Cake cupcakes. These are Jaffa Cakes, which, I don't know, maybe you've not seen them before. If you live in England, then you most definitely have. They're, I mean, they look like a biscuit, but they're actually cakes. It's like a kind of a vanilla -y, I'm gonna try and break this, a vanilla -y cakey thing. Um, and then there's like an orange jelly on top of it, and they're coated in chocolate. We are gonna cupcakeify this, and if you're part of our Patreon, our Bake Club, you may have seen Dane doing a little recipe test on these. Um, if you wanna join us and see loads of behind the scenes content, then join us over at patreon.com forward slash cupcake Gemma. Come and be part of the gang. Nikki is doing loads of kind of cute behind the scenes action videos, and Dane is just, also being cute, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Dane's always doing cute. Um, right, so let's get on with making this cupcake. So we're gonna have a vanilla sponge, we're gonna fill it with marmalade, we're gonna top it with the most decadent chocolate orange ganache, which we're gonna whip. Whipped ganache, I mean, mm, how to make ganache better, you whip it. And then of course we need to put a little jelly on top. So the jelly is where we're gonna start because we need to let it set. Now, if you wanna get all fancy up in here and make your own jelly, then by all means do, but I kind of feel like the Jaffa cake deserves like shop-bought jelly. Just something about it, like it is delicious. Mm, yummy. <laughs> but of course you can make your own. Now I have got actually a packet and a half here, um, mainly because I've got quite a big dish. Um, so for that we've got three quarters of a pint of boiling water, which I believe is around 400 mils. And we're just gonna carefully, whoops, pop our jelly into here. Now, I am just gonna boost the kind of natural orangey flavor a little bit, but it's completely optional. I've just got one orange here and I'm gonna zest the zest of it into our jelly just to get that extra kind of orangey taste. Okie doke, so then I've grabbed my little whisk here or you can just use a spoon or a fork and we're just gonna keep stirring until the jelly cubes have completely dissolved in the boiling water. Mmm. It smells amazing, super orangey, that kind of like sweet orange, but also the kind of natural zingy orange as well. So now very carefully pour it into a dish. You want something that's got a nice flat bottom, don't we all? <laughs> and now we just need to leave this to set. So you wanna put this in the fridge, but of course don't go putting like boiling hot things into your fridge because it will bring the temperature of your fridge up. Oh, I could give you a whole lesson on that people, but apparently we haven't got time. So we're just gonna leave this to one side. I'm gonna let the heat come off it completely and then we'll put it in the, set, in the fridge to set. It will probably take around two hours. So you can get nice and prepped with this one. You could even do it the day before. Anyway, now it is cupcake time. So we're gonna do just a classic vanilla cupcake because that is what the cake part of a Jaffa cake is and who are we to mess about with such a fabulous treat. So standard all-in-one method we're doing here. So I've got 125 grams of self-raising flour and 125 grams of caster sugar and one quarter of a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. That's just going to give our cupcakes a little rise and we'll shuffle that through the sieve. Next up, we've got some soft unsalted butter. Again, 125 grams. Make sure it is soft and squishy, not runny and oily and melted. So that's, woo! <laughs> that's just going right on in, along with two medium to large free range eggs. 
and then we're going on with our paddle attachment onto our stand mixer and we're going to mix this together on a medium to high speed for about 30 seconds. Once it's had 30 seconds, we're going to add a tablespoon and a half of whole milk and quarter teaspoon of vanilla, and then you're going to mix it again for another 30 seconds on a medium to high speed. You might want to give it a stop and scrape to make sure all of your mixture is combined. And what you will be left with is the most silkiest, smoothest, delicious smelling and looking cupcake batter that you ever did see. And it's just vanilla. I love a classic vanilla cupcake. So now we just need to distribute this batter evenly between our 12 cupcakes. So I've got standard size cupcake tin here with paper cases. <sighs> the amount of questions we get about paper cases. Well, you don't really need to ask us anymore. You just need to go to cupcakedemo.com and you can get yourself the very ones that we use in the bakery. Ta-da! <laughs> so I'm going to do this with spoons, but of course you could do this with a piping bag or with an ice cream scoop. So spend just a little bit of time evening them out. Make sure that they're all exactly the same size so that you have even professional looking cupcakes. So these are going to go into our preheated oven. So the oven is at 170 degrees C, which is fan assisted. For a non-fan, 190 degrees C, and we're going to pop them in for about 18 minutes. We're going to give them the finger test, so we're going to pop our finger on and hope that they spring back. If they don't spring back after 18 minutes, leave them in for another minute or two. All right, I think our cupcakes are baked. They smell baked, they look baked, they are baked. So we're just gonna let those cool down and we're gonna get on with making our whipped chocolate and orange ganache. Mm, it is so delicious and we do not do enough with this stuff. It is just crazy good. So the first thing we need to do is infuse our cream to get the orange flavor in there. So you wanna grab yourself a small saucepan and put in 110 mils or grams of double cream. And then you're gonna zest the zest of two oranges over your cream and then bring it to a gentle boil. As soon as it starts to form bubbles, turn off your heat and leave it for about five to 10 minutes to cool down. Lastly, strain it through a sieve to get rid of any bits of orange zest and then continue to let it cool down in the fridge. Et voila, orange cream, which might sound a little bit weird on its own, but once we've combined it with our chocolate and our butter, it is gonna be divine. So we're gonna need quite a lot of chocolate here because this is the icing of our cake, okay? So we've got 300 grams of dark chocolate. Now we like to use a 54% cocoa solid chocolate for this kind of thing, just because it's not as bitter as a 70, but if you like that kind of dark, bitterness, then by all means go for a 70% chocolate. So 300 grams of that and then 150 grams of butter. A lot of ganaches don't have butter in it, but especially when you're icing a cake with it, it's just so much more decadent and kind of creamy, mm, delicious. So we're gonna pop those together and then I'm gonna head over to the microwave and we're gonna melt these two ingredients together. So we're just gonna pop it in the microwave for kind of 15 second blasts at a time, stirring really well in between each one until it's completely melted together. Now we have a delicious, smooth, chocolatey mixture. We can pour in our orangey cream. And lastly, just to kind of boost that oranginess, I've got 40 mils of freshly squeezed orange juice. So that's going in as well. Give it a good stir. And now what we need to do is leave this to set until it's quite thick and spreadable. But do not fear because I was gonna say I, but my beautiful assistant, <laughs> Dane Pemberton, made me one earlier, which I have got just here. So this is how thick you want it to be. You know, kind of like a buttercream. And it looks good, right? But this isn't it. We are about to make this even better. So grab your whisk thingy. You could do this in a stand mixer as well with a balloon attachment. You could probably do it with a normal whisk, um, but you might be 
going for a long time, so maybe do some press-ups beforehand. Um, <laughs> and let's get whizzing. Hope that you can see how different this looks. I think the colour is quite obviously lighter, but the texture of it is it's almost like kind of mousse-like, which means it's going to be really lovely and kind of so much lighter to eat than chomping into like a massive kind of wadge of ganache, which, you know, is delicious, but this just kind of feels better. Anyway, let's get assembling our cupcakes. So, and the first thing we're going to do is fill them with marmalade. Kind of optional, but hmm, actually, I changed my mind. It's not optional. This is going to give them that extra kind of orangey hit. So, grab your apple corers. If you haven't yet got an apple corer for doing this, then you really need to get one. They really are absolutely genius for coring your cupcakes. <laughs> so, wiggle it down, and as usual, we're not going to go all the way through. Just kind of like thir two thirds, maybe, to three quarters of the way through your cupcake. And chomp out the middles. Now, time to fill with the marmalade, and like with the jelly, if you want to make your own, then you get extra points, but I get minus points, because I've just got one from the shop. I have got a good quality one, a fine cut marmalade, rather than one that doesn't have any bits in, because a little bit of texture, extra kind of orangey, is going to make all the difference. So, in a piping bag, go right down to the bottom of the cupcake, squeeze, 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 and then when you get to the top, stop squeezing. So let's just fill all of these cupcakes up. Now when you're filling cupcakes, a little tip just to be aware of. If you kind of overflow your filling um, and it goes onto the cake around here, it's going to make it really difficult to uh, decorate with your icing or your ganache or whatever you're using. So just try and make sure that it is, you know, contained within the cupcake, if not Give it a little wipe up. And now it is time for our whipped ganache. Now I'm gonna pipe this on with this piping bag with a large round nozzle here. This is about 16 millimeter diameter, I believe. And it's an ever such a handy nozzle. Right, let's see if I can do this on my own. Let's fill it up. And of course, I'm using a reusable piping bag because you can wash them and use them over and over again. They're really strong and sturdy. Um, and you can get them from Cupcake Gemini, obviously. Along with the nozzle, in fact. Yeah, everything. Right, I've not made too much of a mess. <laughs> a little bit, but you know. So, what we're going to do is pipe a kind of a flat blob on top, so not as big as we normally would uh, with a cupcake, because remember our jelly's got to sit on top of something. So we're going to hold the piping bag above the cupcake, and we're going to squeeze, 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 keeping the nozzle about a centimetre from the top of the cupcake and we're left with this kind of flat, round blob of delicious whipped ganache. Mmm, right, let's get all of these cupcakes iced. Yummy. If you have any left over, then you could just pipe it back into a bowl. You could put it in the fridge and then scoop it out as truffles when it's set. I mean, whatever you do, do not throw this away because it is like gold. Anyway, it's jelly time. Right, where's my jelly? So here's my jelly that I made yesterday and it's completely set. It looks kind of cool. <laughs> now we need to cut out some little circles that are going to sit on top of our cupcakes. So I've got a little cookie cutter here. And we're going to start by cutting 12 e orange jellies. It's really cute. And now we need to get these out of the tin and we're going to use our trusty little mini cranked palette knife to do so. I'm just going to scoop it in. Now come and have a look what I'm doing because I'm going to get right underneath the jelly to make sure that I'm really getting the bottom of it up so that we can peel it out. <laughs> 
And we've got this, a disc of orange jelly, which is gonna sit on top of each cupcake. <laughs> Looking pretty cute. So just give it a little push down to make sure it is stuck onto the chocolate ganache. And we'll just do that for all our 12 cupcakes. Once they're all on top. Oh, I was hoping it would jiggle more. I mean, it's still pretty cute. Um, <laughs> we just need to make sure that the jelly and the chocolate really stick together because then we're going to dunk these in chocolate because, I mean, I don't know about you, but to me that doesn't really look like a Jaffa cake yet. We're going to dunk these in melted chocolate once these have set. So they're going to go into the fridge. In the, whilst you're doing that, you could maybe have some jelly and ice cream with the rest of this jelly. <gasps> Dane made chocolate ice cream yesterday. We can have chocolate, ice cream, and orange jelly whilst we wait, yeah? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, it is time to finish these Jaffa cupcakes off with some melted chocolate. So I've got about 300 grams of melted chocolate in here. It's going to be more than you need, but you obviously need enough chocolate to dunk your cakes in. So any leftover, you can just spoon it into your mouth or like let it set and eat it as chocolate again. Now I've also just put in about a teaspoon of melted cocoa butter in here. It's totally optional, but what it does, it just kind of keeps it shiny. So if you don't want to temper the chocolate because that is an awful lot of faff. Um, if you want to, then yeah, go for it. But if not, just melt your chocolate normally and pop in about a teaspoon of cocoa, cocoa butter. Too much talking, let's just get dunking. Right, so we're gonna turn these upside down. <laughs> we're gonna go right on in until you get to almost the bottom of the icing. And we'll just let it kind of dribble the excess off before swiping it back round and just popping him back down there. Hee <laughs> hee, so cute. Right, let's just keep going. The last thing that we're going to do is just make these look a little bit more like a Jaffa cake by getting this kind of ridgy effect on the top there. And we're going to do that just with a fork. So as the chocolate starts to set, you want to grab your fork, push it in, pull it off, and then go 90 degrees on top of that. Pretty cute. Yeah. Might want to give your fork a little wipe in between each time just so that it's not getting too messy. I think those look like genuinely amazing. <laughs> I know, but I but they do. Right now, I was gonna just bite into one of these, but the other day, Dane cut one in half, and it looks so cool that I thought you guys you need to see this. So let's open him up. Got a sharp knife. I'm gonna come this way. Oh, that felt really good. <laughs> What? Look at that. That is so cool. I love it. You've got this beautiful, fluffy, moist vanilla sponge, that really beautiful marmalade. We've got our whipped ganache, which looks kind of fluffy and mousse-like, and of course, our jelly. Now, this is probably gonna make an absolute mess, but oh, who cares? <laughs> I didn't get the jelly. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's absolutely delicious. It looks good and it tastes good. Like, what more could you want? And the oranginess is just orange enough, orangey enough, because I know a lot of people don't really like chocolate orange, so don't worry, it's not like super intense. It's just kind of fruity and zingy and just lifts it all up. It's an absolute joy, and it was really fun to make as well. I highly recommend making these if you are a fan of the Jaffa cake. And like I said, we have so many cupcake recipes that are gonna be in the Crumbs and Doilies book. 
um, which again, I'm just going to keep on saying it until you go and get your book. It's available on the 24th November. Pre-order it now. Links in the description box below. And remember that you can also join us um, on Patreon for our Bake Club for loads of behind the scenes action, um, lots of photos and stuff as well from the photo shoots that we did for the book, which was so much fun. And we're pretty much done with it. It's nearly ready to go to print, which is absolutely mind boggling because we've pulled this off in three months, was it? Like four months, like, which has been insane, but it's been such a collaborative team effort. And I can't wait for you guys. We all can't wait for you to see it and buy it and enjoy it. Oh, it's gonna make me emotional. <laughs> Not as emotional as these little cupcakes though. I'm gonna go now. We'll be back next week with another video for you guys. Like I said last time, I can't tell you what it is because we've not filmed it yet, but I guarantee it's gonna be a win. <gasps> I know what it might be. Dane did a key lime pie, like an actual key lime pie, and it was so delicious. So I'm gonna make sure he brings you that one because mm, chef's kiss. See you next week.